Nobody's listening, right? Andy. Yeah. It's a nice rainy day. Um, it is a nice rainy day. Yeah. Ooh. Is anybody listening? Anybody is listening. It, let me tell you something. People are listening. I just scrolled through the old iTunes uh, reviews, and it's like they're coming in. We got a review yesterday. Like they're People are still listening. Listen to this one. My dreams come true from Sprocket Loves Ruby. Aww. I never unsubscribe from this podcast because I still go back periodically and re-listen to some classics. Um, Adam Pally and Brian Safi never get old. So needless to say, I'm ecstatic about this reboot. Also, I'm getting married in November, and these two gems are what I hope to have in a marriage one day. I couldn't imagine a better relationship. Oh, my God. I'm going to cry. That is so... Nice. Should we announce totally separated right now? <laughs> um, listen to this one um, from Kelly1457. I missed you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you guys are back. I really love you guys and where your combos go. Such a fun listen while I'm plugging away at work. Welcome back. Oh my God. And then, I mean, the amount of people that have just been like, yes, we're listening. I'm listening. So happy to be listening. Shout out to people who said I'm listening because they, they followed instructions. And I, I love the other comments too, but I want to give some love to the I'm listening people. Oh my gosh. So great. I'm listening. I'm listening. Say, say, some, say two of the names. Okay. Um, uh, Bright Bailey. Uh-huh. Brightly Bailey, I should say. Um, Code Man, nineteen eighty-two. Yay! Heather Held. Okay, cool. Yay! Thanks, everyone, so much. Keep it coming if you so desire. What day is this dropping? Wednesday mornings. Can I make an announcement? Yes, you may. Today is the day. <laughs> Today is the day that T Bash two point relaunches, not as a podcast per se. But as a live streaming show on Twitch, we're having a mid mid age middle age crisis. Me and JoJo, yep. uh, and we're going to be streaming live, and we are super pumped. So if you want to catch us tonight, go to twitch.tv slash tbash live. I'm so excited for your Twitch show for a lot of reasons. First of all, I haven't seen you this excited about a project in quite some time, which is fun. Yeah. Um, we should say it will be released as a podcast for yeah, people who we're figuring that out. <laughs> okay. I, th I think we are going to probably in the early days, especially put it out as a podcast. It just might not translate as a podcast. We don't know that yet, but okay. we are exploring all options when it comes to archiving. And if you don't catch the show live, there will be multiple ways to watch it later. And what I'm so excited about is that people will be able to get the beverages or sometimes hot sauces that you're enjoying yes. and participate, which is so much fun. That's where our excitement, it feels like a huge unlock that our audience will get to join us in real time. They can drink the beverages with us. They can interact with us in real time. That's like what we're most excited about. And it seems like the perfect venue for the show. Do you know that I'm going to be every Wednesday night at nine o'clock tuning in from our bedroom, which is... 400 feet away from this. Hey, listen, if I ever see you in the comments, it will tickle me pink. Uh, are you serious that you're making my, my day right now? Yeah. That's adorable. Of course I'm going to participate. Um, and also I'll already have whatever you're drinking because I'll just take some of what you're drinking in the show. Yeah. I'm on... on do a little sidecar for myself. And if for some reason you're about to walk into the grocery store right now and you feel like, wow, I want to catch this first episode, we will be drinking White Claw Variety Pack number one. You want to get White Claw <laughs> Variety Pack number one today. Now, I do have a question because one of my favorite things about Tea Bash yep. was people having their beverage profile. Huge part of the show still. Okay. Absolutely. Do you want to bring your mic up? You keep kind of, <laughs> there you go. Yep. Um, great. So, well, I'm very excited for this. It's yeah, we're be so very much excited. Fun. And I signed up for Twitch. It was super easy. Um, I'd never yeah, done we, that. Yeah, we put out an explanation video today on our socials about it. 
You don't even have to sign up if you want to watch the show on Twitch. That's the beauty thing, too. Or you can sign up and get in on more of the action. Okay. Just go to twitch.tv slash tbash live. Tbash live. Yeah. And your socials are tbash live also. Yeah. Everything's tbash live now. Wow. <laughs> big deal. <laughs> big day over here in the Rosen home. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have so much to talk about. This might take us weeks upon weeks. Really? Well, as you might be aware, I just spent a week in Canada. Yeah, uh, I'm aware. Just a fascinating trip all around. I was there for my job, yep. which I love, love, love being on set. It's so energizing. It's so much fun. And I also got really lucky that I got to be there for four different directors. Well, I got to like work with four different well, directors. Well, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Yeah, Tessa Blake, who is a f- genius, mm. just love her. Shout out. And also last time I was there, I got to work with Joanna Kearns, who, as you know, is the mom from Growing Pains back in the day and now is a prolific director and is so wonderful. Which is such a cool uh, career arc, if I might say so myself. I it's agree. like an inspiring career arc. Very inspiring. And she's so inspiring and I just love her. And then Tessa Blake, who I love also and who is so insightful she said something to me that blew my mind that I'll come back to um then I got to watch Allison Miller finish directing her very first episode whoa that's cool which was incredible wow and she's like such a natural I got to watch David Gentoli who is on the show finish directing his first episode which was incredible that's so cool wonderful and uh, I also got to get to know John Fortenberry, who's like a classic director who has directed all of your favorite shows and um, was a delight to get to know him. Does this, did all this, all these directors, did it make you, did it give you the director bug again? Do you want to direct now again? Are you? Uh, oh yeah, I definitely want to direct. I mean, that's going to, that's a long game thing, mm-hmm. but yeah. Oh, for sure. I want to direct. And it sounds like a couple of these uh, directors, you know, Growing Pains was on a while ago. John Fortenberry, I think, is a legend. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, can I say it's like kind of cool that some of these people are a little bit older in years and still making cool stuff? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's something inspiring about that. Super inspiring. Whenever you see, I don't know, I just, it's, it's comforting, I guess. Yes. Yeah. It is. I agree. It's like I, I always like on the music side when I don't know, there there's some producers that I really look up to mm-hmm. that are like still making really cool albums and they're like 60 years old. And you're like, holy shit, that's so cool. Yeah, it's incredible. And also, you know, especially like Joanna. Yeah. And Tessa. Um, but I think Joanna. For her to have gone from being an actor on a sitcom and the time that she started directing. Yeah. Like she started directing, I think the last season of Growing Pains, which was, she was one of only a handful of women directors and Uh, also to make the transition from actor to be taken seriously as a director at that time as a woman. So cool. Is like incredible. Yeah. Um, but so, Tessa, I mean, one of the things I really, really want to direct at some point in my career is a film about my real life experience of when my dad took me and my sister on my dad's and my mom's honeymoon after my mom had died. (laughs) Fun times. We went to Austria and Germany, although I think I might set it somewhere else, but um, there was a lot going on during that trip. That sounds heavy. And... I don't know if this will be part of the movie or not, but unbeknownst to me also, um, he would die two months after that. So I think that should probably be in the movie. (laughs) It's a detail. An opportunity. I remember, well, I remember during that trip we were hiking or we were going up to this castle in in somewhere where it's like what the Disney castle is based on basically. Yeah. And you have to like walk up, like, there are ways to get there and there people can be driven up. People can take, I feel like a tram or some sort of weird thing up, or you can like hike up the mountain. And so we wanted to hike up the mountain. And I remember my dad 
having a really hard time. And he was generally an active guy, played tennis a lot. Mm -hmm. And I remember like he looked like gray at one point and I was like, oh God. Um, And then, you know, so I think that was not unfounded, but thank goodness he didn't just die right there. It's better that he died here at the Oakwood Apartments in Los Angeles playing tennis with the doctor. I feel. Yeah. I, <laughs> for the movie, maybe at the castle. <laughs> I don't know. They're both pretty good settings. Um, so, <laughs> well, listen, what Tessa Blake said, I hope she doesn't mind. I don't know why she would she wouldn't mind this. It's only indicative of her genius. I think she's just one of the most insightful people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to her about that. And I was like, I don't know why he needed to go on that trip. Like, he wanted us to do a trip and bring us all together because we had all like just scattered to the wind, basically, after my mom died. And, you know, we were missing the glue. And... Anna Marie and I, I feel like we're like, great, let's go on a like really nice cruise or let's go on Real, something go to relaxing. Hawaii. Let's look, go to the Four Seasons. Yeah. And also, you know, my dad had become very successful in his career and it, he wanted to really like splurge and take us on a nice trip. Mm-hmm. And but it was like, no, we are going to do your mom's and my honeymoon. And I was saying to Tess, I don't know why. And she goes, well. He probably needed someone to bear witness to that memory so the memories didn't die with your mom. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Anywho. um, Then, okay. God, where to begin? First of all, let me set the stage in Canada. Mm. It's going to be me talking a lot during this episode. Are That's you okay totally with that? fine with me. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a list of things to cover with me? Listen, just do your thing. Don't worry about it. Okay. So the flight out there, um, you know, I'm sitting. So this is a thing in, in the entertainment industry. They If they're flying you places, they have to fly you business class, which is very mm. nice. What's the difference between business class and first class? Well, like on the flights that we were on, it's the same. I mean, but on like an international flight, first class is like. It's two different sections, right? Next level. Yes. Okay. Business class. But you were in first class. Yeah. Let's call it first class. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, and I think so much production has moved to Vancouver Mm -hmm. and Toronto, but, um, And there's like this one hotel in Vancouver where everyone stays. And as Allison Miller said, like, so there's a pool there. And when you walk in, it smells kind of like chlorine. And she said, that's the smell of money to me. Because when she used to book jobs, they would, you know, for working actors, when you walk into the Sutton Hotel, it means you're working. Wait, the hotel smells like chlorine? Yeah. So like the lobby smells like chlorine. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. That didn't make sense at first. Okay. Got you. And so, um, but the flight out because they're flying all these actors and directors and writers business class and there are only so many seats. Like if you're on a flight from LA to Vancouver, there are people in the entertainment industry sitting there. Mm. And the woman next to me who seemed very lovely ultimately, um, but was having a very, very loud somewhat tense conversation with someone as we were kind of like taking off. And so that everyone was annoyed with it because it was a long, it was all during boarding, Okay, you know, and everyone's trying to like settle in. Yeah. And she just has a voice that carries. Okay. (laughs) Very sweet though. Very, I think kind of just unaware of that, but everyone around her was like, Oh my God. And, um, through that, I learned that she was an actor because through the conversation, I learned some details about her life. Okay. And then what was hilarious was, um, oh, and then also as we were getting off the plane, I locked eyes with this guy and we both had the like, do I know you look? Mm. And also you're going through like, oh, it's probably just an actor I know. Sure. But then I realized, no, it's my dear, dear friend, Amy Vidal's husband. Hey, nice. <laughs> Matt, Matt Vidal, a very talented actor who was going up there for work. So we're, we're all getting off the plane. We're all going to the Sutton. Was Matt on business class too? Yes. Okay. 
Everyone's going to the Sutton. <laughs> like half of that plane is going to the Sutton. Okay. Um, all in different cars, obviously. COVID. COVID. Or and, maybe and even also not COVID. Just, just that's the way. Power. <laughs> Power, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what was so funny is I'm, I like get checked in, I go to my room and then I'm like coming out to go get something to eat. And I hear the voice of the woman next to me. Oh yeah. In the plane. On the plane. I didn't know she was staying at the sudden, by the way. You assumed that. I, mean, I assumed. Let's be honest. She's in the room across from me. Uh, and I'm hearing the continuation of the conversation. You know a lot about this lady. Yeah. Anyway, so that was funny. And then I saw Matt later and uh, another friend's husband was staying there. And it was just, it feels like uh, Cameron Esposito was staying there, got together with her after filming. Can I say something? Yeah. If the walls could talk at the Sutton. If the walls could uh, talk. What John Fortenberry was saying one time he stayed at the Sutton and as he was walking down the long hallway of rooms, every single door had a call sheet under it mm. for the next day. Meaning like every single person was due to set the next day. I mean, I'm thinking more, you know, the marriages that have been ruined at the Sutton. Oh, and yes. The actor trysts. And oh, all yeah, sorts because of that things. is a common thing. The bar, the actors getting belligerent and drunk at the bar. Yeah, I, I'd be excited to have a drink with you at that bar because it's kind of our kind of bar for the stage of our lives. It's like wood paneling, mm -hmm. great old fashioned. Mm. Uh, OK, so shall I move on to um, what happened to me on yes, set? I've been dying. I've only had a teaser. I need to know. I don't know what is happening with my body, but I do suspect it's perimenopause. Oh, boy. <laughs> what does peri mean, by the way? Peri, I think, means like partial. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Or before. Yeah, probably before. Okay. Perimenopause. But this is a stage, I guess, can last up to 10 years leading up to menopause. And menopause, you're in menopause when you have not had your period for a year or two, depending on where you live. <laughs> I'll forego my questions. I have them. I want to hear that's them. A, no, that's an interesting, depending on where you live, is it like below a certain hemisphere? They do it one way <laughs> well, and above another? Well, that is interesting because I was Googling it and like, I believe it was in Australia that was like after two years oh, okay. that they consider you in menopause. So they okay. give those gals out there another, another year before they're uh, tossed Kicked out. To the curb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had a vision of someone with a big broom <laughs> yes. just sweeping women You're off some cliff or the, something. Yeah, the irrelevant. <laughs> You're irrelevant now. Um, so I don't know also if it's like the airplane pressure did something to me. Oh, boy. But I I got my period. When the, did you get your period? Right before I left, pretty much. Like okay, the so day before, before the plane. Yes. Okay. So this was day three. Now, normally my period is uh, a two day event. And then after day two, it's still there for a few more days, but it's like not, it's not something I'm like constantly thinking about or whatever. It Due just, to flow? Flow so and like also it like. It goes to a light flow after a couple of days? It goes to a light flow and also like day two of my period, I'm usually, usually like really run down. It's heavy flow. I feel crampy. Mm. Everyone knows day two is like all of my friends will can be I, like, it's day two. Can we I stop know what you that for means. a quick second? Is yeah. there any analogy you could make to explain to a man what a period feels like or is it in, would it be impossible? Is there any sort of thing? That could give me a sense at all. I think we could I think we could break it down into sections. Like when you have like diarrhea cramps. This is exactly what I wanted from you. I wanted to know if there was any <laughs> correlation between those types of cramps in a period. I was just yes, please. Yeah. How so? That's kind of what it feels like. Get the fuck out of here. But instead of being like I gotta get to the bathroom, I'm gonna shit my pants, it's in your vagina? Yeah. Or no. Or do is there a release feeling? 
No, that's okay. the difference. There's no release. But the cramps feel the but same? But then they just kind of go away. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close, actually. Could one... Like the really intense ones that you get with diarrhea. And could they ever be confused for one another? Sure. For real? Yeah, I think so. Okay, sorry. Well, um, thank you for, for sharing. For me, I think that feels right. But then on top of it is like fatigue. Mm-hmm. Concern about, like, are you covered, which I'm about to get into. Are you covered? In terms of blood catching. Okay. Um, also, mood swings, you know, like the day before my period still. I just saw a comedian. I forget who it was. Oh, I think it was Sashir Zameda was talking about, like, I'm 42 years old now. It still takes me by surprise every month when I'm like... Usually it's about cl- how clean or tidy our house is. I get like in a rage about it. Mm. And then the next day I'm like, oh, my period. <laughs> that was what, because when it's happening, I'm going, I know that my, how strong I feel about this is it does not match the situation. Can I tell you something that might be hard to hear? <laughs> yes. And I would say this is just something new in the last couple of years. I know now. <laughs> what? Yeah. You can tell when it's coming. Oh yeah, <gasps> and it's been it's been actually a this nice <laughs> it's been a nice thing for me because I can um, I can maybe you'll have some sort of reaction while I'll go I'll be like geez that seems out of line and then I go oh yes oh no God. big deal going on here I don't have to take anything personally right now <laughs> you know. But it's a new thing. I don't think that that's been your case. I don't think I would have ever been able to. And I'm not getting it with 100% accuracy, but let's say (laughs) 60% accuracy. I might have the thought like, "Mm, I bet maybe there's some stuff going on there. And then the next day you'll be like, I got my period. And I'll be like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. Oh, my God. I don't know if I should have told you that. No, no, I think that's good, but... But we don't ever have to talk about it. But I just want to clarify one thing. Yeah. But this is, you know, 14 years into our... Actually, 18 years into our relationship. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not saying that <laughs> I, I'm... Uh, it took me this long to figure it out. I don't think you showed as big a signs back in the day. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> No, I don't think that is horrible. Are you kidding me? This is okay. That was going to be my next question, Andy. And you just said the thing that I really hoped it. I thought you were saying it took me like I'm just now tuning into you. But you're saying no, just your your mood swings have gotten so much worse. No, it's but it's not like mood swings. There's just hints. There's just hints that happen. And the one that made me think of it and resonated the most was like the house cleaning thing. Yeah. Like you'll all of a sudden I'll see. And it's not like you're taking out it on anybody. It's like a personal struggle where I see you being like this fucking house. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, why the fuck are these cups over here? And I see you having this like personal turmoil going on and I look over and maybe I kind of, you know, step into another room or something like that. But, you, it, but I imagine you like <laughs> ushering the kids like mommy needs a little space. But I'm just saying, whereas I've, uh, I've just, I just, I can notice that thing, but that one really resonates, you know, or like you'll like the way you'll, uh, handle the refrigerator door or something, you know, (laughs) (laughs) you'll shut it with a certain zest. Oh no. Okay. 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 So, well, listen, we only have eight to 10 more years of that. So what a ride. Uh which I'd love to hear from women. You know, I don't have older women in my life. You know, all I hear about menopause is how horrible it is, but I'm like, isn't the other side of it kind of fucking awesome? Yeah, let me ask you do that and we might not know these answers. You hear the you hear about like hot flashes, right? Mm-hmm. Is that while you're going through menopause? Like, is there a world that do you finally get on the other side of it and it's like, I don't have to deal with any of this I bullshit hope anymore. So. I don't know. No one tells me. Like there should be a, a gift eventually, right? Yes. Yeah. There should be. You uh, you've 
you've done your service. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, speaking of hot flashes, well, I'll get to that. But anyway, I so I had my period going about life per usual. I just want to say to all men out there, just know when you're out in the workplace with women, there's a good chance that a decent percentage of them are quietly bleeding mm. as you're going through your stuff. Like know that they are dealing with things and still getting it done. You know, it's like an extra thing that we're going through and just go through it and deal with it. If I go pee and I like get a little pee in my underpants and that feeling, and I'm talking like a drop, mm -hmm. it like takes me off my game. Yes. Okay. So we have to think about like, what's our flow? What type of protection do we have? How's this going? Is it also I'm crampy? I'm exhausted. I still have to focus. I can't let this take me off my game. You know, it's a lot and we do it. And I, I think that it's part of what makes women so strong. But um, I went to work. So it's day three. I'm assuming like I'm past the point of whatever. I got through day two flying colors. I had a great day on set. I go into day three. I only brought like my regular pads. And also I don't wear tampons after having kids, which is a whole other thing mm. um, because you know, things have changed. So I go into day three with my regular pads. I'm not wearing like a panty liner or whatever. By the grace of Jesus Christ, our baby Lord and Savior, Saint Jesus baby. I, for some reason, I had these jeans on that I'm wearing, like blue jeans, light blue. Light blue. And like my regular sweater and short jacket. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to wear my black jeans today in this long thing. And it was actually because Allison Miller the day before had worn a coat that was similar to the sweater or whatever. And I was like, this is fun. So I put, I changed my clothes. Thank God. I go to work and I'm working. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling kind of crampy and I was like, that's kind of strange for day three. Yeah, for you. That's weird. And... I feel, I stand up and I feel like a gush and I'm like, okay, but, um, that's fine. Cause I have my like pad on. Do you normally feel the, when the blood comes out? No, not, not occasionally like this, but. Is it more of a slow drip? Yes. It's not even a drip. It's, it's just like a ooze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I go. I wait too long is what's happening here. Okay. Because I'm assuming I'm covered. And also I'm on day three. And I'm whatever. Mm -hmm. I go to the bathroom. And I have leaked through my pad. Through my the entire seat around my jeans. Like mm. my entire backside and down onto the top of my legs and in the whole crotch, like down, like what would I say? A quarter of my upper thigh area. Wow. Blood. And as I went to the bathroom, this is getting very graphic, but you know, whatever. There were two huge blood clots. Oh, come on. And I thought, I literally was like, is this placenta left over from Otis? Like, what the fuck is happening here? Felt like there was like a, a an animal had taken over. I didn't even know, and I was kind of freaking out. And I also, I'm on set. We're filming. I have no way. Like, if if I had worn the blue jeans, I probably would have been like, I have to go back to the hotel. Would you at, at any point in time I have two questions. Pause you for one sec. One, are clots how often does a clot happen in general? I know this sounded like it was a big clot, but just any sort of clot, is that happen? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. every period. Okay, 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 okay. And then um at any point did you think I wonder if I could go to wardrobe and they there some sweet person in wardrobe would hook me up with some jeans. No, but that is such a like that's a brilliant thing that I just was not and I couldn't even sure, access. Yeah. Just curious. Okay. Um my head was in such a fog this day that someone someone was asking me like uh someone very close to me their last name 
it would be like asking me my last name. And I was like, I cannot access that right yeah, now. Yeah, like yeah. I do know it, but yeah. I can't get to it. So, um, if I had been wearing blue jeans, I would have been like, I guess probably I would have gotten to wardrobe. Someone would have gotten me there. Mm-hmm. But luckily, and this is a great reason why it's important to have women on set. Like set is usually a very male, Mm -hmm. but I, I was honestly worried. Um, I started feeling faint. Yeah. You lost a lot of blood. And I also started thinking my, and then I started getting, going to catastrophe zone and I started almost having like a panic attack and I had to like. Because of the amount of blood in the clots seemed. Seemed too much. And also like something might be really wrong. Okay. And also, this was at like 9 a.m. on a day that went till uh, all said and done, 10. Jesus. So I uh, decided I just put that sweater thing on. Now, it was wet blood. So I spent a lot of time just walking around with my legs kind of spread apart to try to dry the blood. Did you, so I'm assuming you did like, you did, you tried to do some sort of clean up like in the bathroom, yes. sopping up some of it, getting it off your skin on your legs. And at least I got a new pad on, but on, pad. on wet underwear, like so gross, like bloody wet. This is so disgusting. It was like a carry level of situation. And I think. God, it was black jeans, so you couldn't really see it. And then I had this long, like, sweater jacket. Do you think there's any women out there listening that are like, oh, honey, this is perimenopause. You're going to start carrying around the super ultra pads and an extra pair of panties now. Like, do you think there's anyone that's like, yeah. this is what it is? Maybe. Whoa. I'm really curious, curious right? about yeah. next period to see if, you know. Anyway, and the other joy of perimenopause is now my periods are coming like every 21 days. So I have like one good day a month now where I'm like just me Mm. and not like ovulating because ovulating is now pain. It's all fucking. That's why I can't wait for it to be done. Mm. Um, But anyway, so uh, luckily it all did dry. How long did it take to dry though? Like a couple hours. Oh, <laughs> for fuck's sake. And I, did you, it was ha- were you mindful? Like not like, were you, could you not sit down? What yes, were you I doing at work? And you were like standing around. I was standing looking at the monitors and the scenes that they were filming also were like scenes I was excited to see being filmed. And, um, I did tell our wonderful script supervisor who was such a, such a saint. What'd you say? A woman. Um, I was <laughs> John, John, Hey Jimbo. Um, I just had two clots the size of apples. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gushing over here. I said to Tammy, I said, listen, because in my mind I was like, what if I pass out in the bathroom and no one finds me? Oh, that's smart. And then. Also, and or, what if I just pass out here and the paramedics come? They wouldn't know to look. They're not going to look in my vagina first thing. And you couldn't see the blood on my pants. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's smart that you told the script supervisor. In, in case something happened, she would be like, oh, shit. She told me she was having a crazy period. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's, so, great. that's very smart. So anyway, that's what I did. But luckily, then that seemed to be the last of it. And were you like, can you tell to the script supervisor? Did you show your pants or anything? No, because I I had that sweater thing on and I like wrapped it around me and gotcha. There okay. was no luckily. Anyway, and that's what I wore for that whole day, and it was tough, but got through it. Well, I'm sorry. That's gnarly. Gnarly. Okay, so this brings me to another disgusting thing. Uh, we're good. We're good. Can I? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I don't understand what, how some people behave in a bathroom. Oh, God, don't get me. I had something happen yesterday. Okay, why don't you tell yours and then I'll get to mine. By the way, I have a lot of other Canada stories, but I think that this is... Let's just have this episode be the disgusting episode. Um, well, we went out to breakfast yesterday and you had gone to the bathroom and then maybe 15 minutes later, I was like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and in the in the bathroom next to the toilet, 
it was as if someone used a bunch of like either baby wipes or, you know, uh, wet wipes, but not the flushable kind. And instead of putting those in a garbage can, which there was like a big garbage can in the bathroom, this person had thrown them to the side of the toilet, probably like eight of them all over like one's lying on the plunger, one's lying on cleaning stuff. It was just like someone wiped their butt eight times or wiped their kid's butt. And instead of putting them in the trash can, just tossed them what next to the toilet i'm like what the fuck are you and this was like a nice place like yeah would have been so easy to put them in the trash can and it just made me think people are monsters monsters yeah. why how do you think that's okay <laughs> i want to tell you another thing that i think you will really think is funny about bathrooms so i've been going snowboarding lately a bunch and i love this little mountain it mm-hmm. is great But the bathroom situation is not ideal. Okay. And I've been taking our daughter. uh, And when you first get there in the morning, it's great because they're clean, right? But by the end of the day, they can get pretty gnarly. Now, I haven't had to use this, but I have this on my person. In my snowboard jacket, I have one rubber glove. And then I have (laughs) one one, um, to-go Clorox wipe. In case I need to really clean so smart. the toilet. So smart. And it, it alleviates so much anxiety to yeah. me because I'm like, I'm like, what if I get, what if, you know, there's a all these different stalls, but you open each one up and each one is a disaster by the end of the yeah. day. And now I know if push comes to shove, I have the tools. That is so smart, Andy. Are you being a little no. condescending or are you like it? I love it, especially right now after a pandemic, like people who, like you're saying with the wipes, who leave that like that. Yeah. Now, of course, sometimes there are exceptions. Like actually after my back surgery, like had I accidentally dropped a wipe, I couldn't probably have gotten it or something like that. But but that's not what's going on What a specific, no. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, okay. So yes, so gross. Yeah. And I, through traveling and flying and stuff, I experienced uh, a lot flying. of gross bathrooms. Yeah. There was a bathroom situation in a place of work. It's a place where people work yeah. as, as is a restaurant and yeah. whatever that I went in and obviously like through my carry experience of my period I was very careful uh, always to be very clean on the airplanes I always wipe everything down after me and more times than not when I come in it's not been wiped down they're like water everywhere that you're like this is left over from someone washing their hands which is so gross like can't we do better especially mm. now that we're sure post pandemic like we know how much this matters like mm-hmm. wipe shit down it takes 2 seconds yeah put stuff in the trash come on people yeah and so uh this was new though this was a new one i went into the bathroom and there is pubic hair all over the sink <laughs> And counter next to the sink. <laughs> and to... This is a unisex bathroom? Unisex bathroom. To a degree that I'm like... And I had used this bathroom before and there was not pubic hair. Oh my God. And I'm like, what has happened here? I like the idea that you walk out of the bathroom and then you're on set. And let's just like blame this on an actor for some well, reason. I haven't said that this is on set, by the Can way. Can I imagine I- it is? Because this is funnier if Okay, it is. go ahead. Uh, that like you walk out and you're like, what the fuck? And then you look up and they're shooting and, uh, there's some actor that's like seven feet tall and you're like, uh, yes. Well, so that was one of the things. The countertops were kind of lower. Interesting. Like not super low though. 30 inches. I <laughs> 33 being the standard. <laughs> yeah. Like not, nothing crazy, but there is like a big mirror in front of the thing. And I was like. The only thing I can come to is that someone may have masturbated. Or was washing their balls off. (sighs) Because they got sweaty or something? 
maybe I think more typically it would be like you would wash them off because you like you thought you were gonna get a BJ maybe. <laughs> Okay. Your face. <laughs> okay. Listen, <laughs> whatever it is. Someone was jerking off or washing their junk, right? What else could it be? What else could it be? And also, uh, how does one do that and not clean up after yourself. Okay, you want my theory then? I'm going to go with your jerking off theory and that they like kind of get off on it. Because one, it's already a little um, taboo to be jerking off at a place of work and to leave the... <laughs> kind <av> of, Andy. <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> this... <laughs> it's, kind, it's kind of taboo to be jerking off. Listen. Yes. Okay. I, but but the idea of like like they maybe wanted to get you know they well, wanted to leave the evidence. Well, congratulations to whoever who left it because <sighs> guess who's there cleaning it up? And it wasn't like someone Elizabeth that, Lame. You cleaned it up? Yes. <laughs> okay, You're we are cut from a completely different cloth. <laughs> I would be fucking, you couldn't pay me enough to clean up someone else's um, pubic hair in a restroom, a public restroom? Well, it's not like public, first of all, but it kind of is, I, you know. Public is like a, at a workplace. Are you, okay, is this not a high traffic restroom? Were you worried that... Were you worried that if you didn't clean it up, someone might think it was yours? Because yes. that's the only way I would if clean it up. If someone's waiting outside to come in, <laughs> I'm. I would never be able. Like, so yeah. So but wouldn't you, you need it? Wouldn't you have needed a stool to make that mess? I, I don't. I, I don't know, but there. Let, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. If I were walking into this bathroom and you were walking out, we didn't, we're not married, but we, you know, whatever. And that was there. I'm thinking one of two things. That was you. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Or, and, and I'm judging you and like forever my view of you has changed. Mm -hmm. Or I'm thinking you experienced that like, washed your hands around it just you know and then just left it there for me and everyone else like I still would judge you for not cleaning it if granted I understand me being a guy because I we, we are we're 90 percent sure this was a guy I don't know why that just feels right oh yeah um but if you came <laughs> out I would not have judged you at all all for not cleaning it up because I'd be like, why would it be on her to clean up some pervert's jerk off? Mess? This is also, by the way, how many hairs were we talking? I took a picture. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Show me. Okay, hang on. Now show me. Hang on. Show me the picture. I'm not posting this, by the way. I think this is unfair to people listening because I'm. Why didn't you lead with the picture? I need to see what's happening. <laughs> okay, hang on. And then I'm going to promptly delete this. I guess you can describe for people what is going on here. Where is this picture? By the way, real cool that you have a picture of pubes on your phone with like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took it because I knew you would want to see it after I. What if I would have seen this on your phone and you hadn't told me the story? I probably wouldn't even figured it out. I would have then told you the story. Okay, I want you to zoom in. Okay. And take a trip around. <clears throat> okay. And there was more outside of this, by the way. Oh. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, on. eight, nine. <gasps> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This, it's uncountable. 
and they are without a doubt pubes. <laughs> and they're, they're and they're s- all towards the edge of the sink, which is like where they, I guess, where they would be. They've gone all over, and like also by the paper towels. Someone was washing their balls. Is that your take? It's not a masturbation. Here's the thing. Okay, if it is, um, okay, <laughs> if it was masturbation, mm-hmm. that's a lot even for masturbation, right? I don't know, actually. That's a great question. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if it was, okay, here's the thing. More likely, like, let's say if this person was going to masturbate, I would think it would be in the, is this, was there stalls in this bathroom or was it at all a single enclosed no, thing? No, it's a single enclosed okay. thing. So here's the thing. You would think that they would just... Um, go by the toilet. Go by the toilet. Unless... But there's a mirror there. Do they like to see themselves? So unless they're like more... It's a more deviant situation, right? Where yes. they are looking at it. Or maybe they just wanted somewhere to put their phone on. Like maybe they're watching porn. But where would they put their phone on there? Cause just lying on, the, lying on the sink. Yeah, but there's pubic hair all over. Like then they're getting pubic They'd hair They'd put the it sink? up here to the left of the sink. Okay, the there phone is could hair just be lying there. Up there, yes. Um, those so phone lying there is really the only plausible thing. After that, it gets to be deviant. Like they like to look in the mirror, or they like the idea of like jerking off and maybe trying to hit the mirror. Who oh knows? My God. <laughs> it oh gets my deviant God. though. It gets very. Oh it gets very deviant. I feel like. Candy. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Or I think more likely is. Someone was washing their balls for some reason, which that there could be a lot of possibilities. And it's a little less deviant, but they should have cleaned up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) At the end of the day. Now, did you see? Oh, I didn't even get the picture of. This is what I'm saying. I don't know if you're seeing this, but like there's hair up here. This is the paper towel roll. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that here. It's covering the whole area okay hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on it goes all the way it's the whole thing i wish in audience i really don't know the con this is the first i'm hearing about this and i don't know the context of where this is and i just so you don't have to say anything i'm assuming that you're at an acting work thing could there have been a world where someone was trimming something on purpose no 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 and also i i want to take it off the table that it was where i work okay I'm not going to say anything more about it because I don't want to like, you know. Got it. But but those don't look like trimmed beard hairs. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to think of like, no, did no, someone no. like trim their beard no. and then did a poor job of cleaning up? But those look like pubes. Those are pubes. Then there are pubes. Anyway, but Gross. I did okay. clean it up, of course. Wow. I, that's crazy. It, you should, it would have been nice if you had a rubber glove and a Clorox wipe. It really would have. Yeah. I might have to get on board the Andy train yeah. from here on out. But I feel like I clean up, like, if I'm going into the airport and there's a stall that's like, so the stall's fine, but there's like poop or something left in the thing. I'm kicking up and flushing that. With my shoe, like, I don't feel like people, I feel like maybe there are two types of people. I'm doing a little bit to make things a little bit better for the next person. Like, it takes a little. I'm not. Okay. But I will say, if I go into a stall and it's just like, it's too far gone, or it looks like, like. There's sometimes poop spray where I'm like, how, how did you even do that? Do you know? Do you ever Poop? see that? No. Maybe that's a guy's bathroom thing. Really? Ew. Like I feel like men are. This is the thing, and women are too. Granted, I, I'm like for some reason I feel like that wipes. That maybe I'm just gendering things, but I'm like I feel like that was a woman. But I feel like in these, you know, and I'm all for all gender bathrooms, especially in these situations where it's like single. You know, it's a one bathroom that you close the door and lock it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I I would love to remove gender from our bathroom situation. Having said that, when it's a women's bathroom, there's a level of uh, self-respect happening mm. that I often find is not the same when it's an all-gender bathroom. Yeah. I've never seen poop spray. 
real. I I see it all the time, and in ways that you're like, how is it physic? Like, does your poop shoot out? Like, do you is your hole in a different place? It makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> Seriously, there's a lot of guys listening right now that are like, yep. Wait, maybe I'm just not looking for it. <laughs> if you're seeing <laughs> those pubes, there's no way you can miss what I'm talking about. Ew. None. Ew. Let's move on. This yeah, is, so unless sorry. Unless there's anything you wanted to uh, put a button on it with. Um, <clears throat> so I let's let me let me. As we've painted this like horrific picture of humanity, let me tell a little story that was like a nice picture of humanity. Love it. Um, so my flight back was a couple days ago and I, um, you know, sitting in the airplane, in the plane waiting for it to go Mm -hmm. and the guys are coming over, loading up the luggage and like, the little trolley comes over and you know, it's like a little choo choo train and one of the cars has all the suitcases and mm-hmm. then and then on one of the cars there's just a big box, mm-hmm. long box. And the guys who had been like hoisting the the bags on like came over and their whole vibe changed and it was human remains. <laughs> and I was so with you and I thought you were going to say and it was a dog and I was like yes it was a dog how lovely to see these men you know become just you know to dogs no but they were like patting the box and having a conversation with each other which I would imagine was Reminiscing about people in their lives, maybe. And they were so gentle Mm. and thoughtful, working together. And it just really touched me. I'm glad. That's very sweet. (laughs) (laughs) It was a little dog. (laughs) Sorry, that was really loud. Um, Anyway, I just, it just really made me feel like that's nice. That is nice. And it's nice that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that a lot. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Care is being taken with your loved one's bodies. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to bring up? I'm kind of like shell-shocked from this entire thing. I don't know. <laughs> this episode this. was a lot. <laughs> this is intense. <laughs> By the way, I had other experiences in Canada that had nothing to do with bathrooms and... Periods. <clears throat> You know, magical moments of seeing things that we wrote come together. And this was an episode I wrote with Terry Coley, who I think so highly of. And um, it's really cool. I mean, every time I'm on set, I have the thought, like, I cannot believe how lucky I am to get to do make believe. Play make believe. And the actors are so talented and. It's just to work with such amazing people and it's incredible. And I also think back to like, you know, seven years ago, I listeners of this who were with us throughout Totally Lame, I'm sure know the uh, struggle that was there to get to do this Mm, and you know so much doubt that I'd ever be doing it or able to do it and I will never take it for granted I love that that's so cool it is cool yeah and I'm glad you know what now it's easy to say but like I'm glad for that struggle because I think that there are other people I see who didn't have that and um, I think it services me in a lot of ways like I had to work really really hard to be able to do this and um, it I don't know it's just amazing I love it I'm proud of you thank you it's great well this is another episode I feel like I should nobody's listening a- right right <laughs> nobody I hope <laughs> I kind of hope nobody's listening. It's actually it's just ruin their day. Honestly, it's just one guy somewhere (laughs) jerking off in front of a mirror right now, (laughs) trying to reach the mirror.
<laughs> that was the thing you said that was very upsetting. <laughs> um, all right. I love you. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Shh.